Hello and welcome to Cultural Apologists React for today, September 5th, 2024. This is an AI-generated podcast and can make mistakes. Use it for generating possible ideas, but don't rely on it as an authoritative guide to the day's news or to the details of cultural apologetics. The long-awaited second phase of the Grenfell Tower fire inquiry has been published, revealing widespread failures and corruption among companies involved in the renovation of the building. The 1,700-page report criticizes successive governments for failing to halt the spread of combustible cladding, which was a major contributor to the devastating fire that killed 72 people in June 2017. The report also singles out several companies, including Arconic, Celotex, and Kingspan for their role in promoting and selling dangerous materials. It accuses these companies of systematic dishonesty and deliberate and sustained strategies to manipulate the testing processes, misrepresent test data, and mislead the market. The inquiry also criticizes the local authority, the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, for its response to the disaster which it describes as demonstrating a marked lack of respect for human decency and dignity. The report highlights instances of discrimination against Muslim residents who were observing Ramadan at the time. The report makes several recommendations for reform, including the creation of a new construction regulator and an urgent review of building regulation guidance on fire safety. It also suggests that town halls could be stripped of building control functions and a national authority created instead. In response to the report, Elizabeth Campbell, leader of the council, acknowledged that the council had failed the residents of Grenfell Tower and accepted the withering critique of the system. She promised that the council would learn from every single criticism in the report. The publication of the report has been met with a strong reaction from survivors and families of those who died in the fire who have long campaigned for justice and accountability. They welcomed the report's findings, but expressed frustration that it had taken so long to be published and that many questions still remain unanswered. Overall, the Grenfell Tower fire inquiry has exposed a culture of neglect, corruption, and incompetence among companies and authorities responsible for ensuring public safety. The report's recommendations will be closely watched by those affected by the tragedy and by policymakers seeking to prevent similar disasters in the future. So how might we think about this story from the standpoint of cultural apologetics? The Grenfell Tower Fire Inquiry Report presents a scathing critique of the systemic failures that led to the tragic loss of 72 lives in June 2017. As Christian cultural apologist Leslie Newbigin once observed in his book The Gospel in a Pluralist Society, The greatest challenge to the Christian faith is not from outside, but from within, Newbegin. This statement rings eerily true as we examine the role of corruption and negligence among companies and authorities responsible for ensuring public safety. At the heart of this story lies a profound failure of moral imagination. The report's findings reveal a culture of systematic dishonesty among companies like Arconic, Celotex, and Kingspan, who prioritized profits over people's lives. This echoes Newbigin's argument in proper confidence that the root of the problem is not so much the presence of evil as the absence of good, Newbigin. In this case, the absence of good was starkly evident in the deliberate manipulation of testing processes and misrepresentation of test data. The local authorities' response to the disaster also comes under fire for demonstrating a marked lack of respect for human decency and dignity. This is particularly egregious given that many Muslim residents were observing Ramadan at the time. Newbegin's insights on the importance of understanding different cultures in his book, Foolishness to the Greeks, are especially relevant here. He notes that the gospel is not a cultural phenomenon, but it is always culturally expressed. Newbigin. The failure to respect and acknowledge the cultural practices of Muslim residents during Ramadan highlights a deeper issue of neglect and ignorance. The report's recommendations for reform, including the creation of a new construction regulator and an urgent review of building regulation guidance on fire safety, are crucial steps towards preventing similar disasters in the future. However, as Newbigin cautions in Signs Amidst the Rubble, The church must not be content with merely tinkering with the existing structures. 
Newbigin. Instead, we need a more radical transformation of our values and priorities. The council's leader, Elizabeth Campbell, has acknowledged that the council failed the residents of Grenfell Tower and accepted the withering critique of the system. This is a welcome step towards accountability, but as Newbigin notes in A Walk Through the Bible, repentance must be accompanied by restitution, Newbigin. The real test will be in implementing meaningful reforms that prioritize human life over profits. In conclusion, the Grenfell Tower Fire Inquiry Report offers a devastating indictment of systemic failures and corruption. As Christian cultural apologist Leslie Newbigin reminds us, the gospel is not just a message, but a way of life, Newbin. The story highlights the urgent need for a more profound transformation of our values and priorities, one that prioritizes human dignity and decency above all else. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Cultural Apologists React. Be sure to come back tomorrow for a new take on the day's news from the standpoint of Christian cultural apologetics.